Hey guys, so as you know, whenever you buy yourself a new laptop or desktop PC, you end up getting Windows 8 pre-installed on your computer. Now, a lot of people do not like Windows 8 because they find it too difficult to use, but I'm going to show you guys the nice features about Windows 8, why I personally like it, and how I can help you better your experience with it. So the first thing to note is that we are currently on the start screen, also known as the Metro desktop, and it's basically the same screen that is known as a home screen on your Android or iOS device. Now on this Metro desktop, you can typically have these things called tiles, all these blocks and rectangles. Now some of them move, and we call the moving ones live tiles. You can only get live tile enabled apps if you download them off the Windows 8 store, which is the equivalent of an Android uh, Play Store or the Apple iOS store. It's not as fully featured as them, but they do work in the same way, as in you can download specific apps like games, Angry Bird you have to pay a dollar for or something, and you also get your free applications. As you can see, I have the Tumblr app, the WordPress app, and the Skype. Now, the thing to note about these apps is that they open up in full screen. As you can see, if I open up the store, it opens up in full screen, and it has the same tile layout as the Metro desktop. Now, to scroll, we can either use the uh, scroll bar at the bottom, or we can use our mouse wheel. As you can see, you can choose between lots of different applications. Now, this browsing fashion is a bit slow. As you can see, if I want to look at the government apps, I have to scroll all the way from the spotlight to the government. Now once you are in an application, you may be wondering how to close it because there's no um, X button anymore. Now, the same way that your cell phone works, basically you don't have an uh, X button on your Android device when you want to close your Facebook Messenger. Instead you have something called a home button and Windows uh, 8 also has something called a home button. It's the Windows logo key on your keyboard, so if you click on it, it will take you back to your home screen which is your Metro desktop. Now if you are on your home screen and you click on the, the button again, it will take you to your most recently used application, which in this case is the Windows 8 Store. So let's get back to our desktop. Now another way to use this, instead of using your keyboard commands, is to move your mouse to the left corner, uh, bottom left corner, and you can see it shows me a little preview of the thing that's going to open, which in this case is the store, and it basically emulates the same thing as the Windows logo on your keyboard does. Now when you're on your Metro desktop, you may find that you have a lot of unused applications that you want to get rid of. Now to do that, all you have to do is right click on the application, and you can see a taskbar menu at the bottom pops up, where you can uninstall, unpin from start, pin to taskbar, as well as many other things. Now what happens if you want to remove multiple different things? Well basically all you have to do is right click on a whole bunch of them, and you can unpin them from the start. Now unpinning them from the start will make them go away, so if you don't like having um, the GeForce experience on your computer, all you do is you right click and you click on unpin. I personally like it there so I'm not going to do that. Well actually let's just do it. You can see it disappears and um, I have to reorganize this so there we go. And like like you saw right now all you have to do to reorganize is to click hold and then drag around. And you can see if you move it far enough to the right you can create a new menu and basically well, it's not really a menu, I guess you could use it as categories, so if you want all your games in one specific category, you can do that. Now sticking to this whole um, editing your Metro desktop, when you right click anywhere on your desktop, in fact, if you right click here, you can see you bring up the all apps icon at the bottom. And these are all the apps you have installed, once again you use your mouse wheel to scroll between them. And a better way to search for applications, if you cannot find it, as you can see this is not very attractive in terms of looking for an application. Um, so let's say we want to search for Camtasia, but we don't know where it is. So what we do is we go to the charms bar. Now, if you're using a tablet, just swipe from the right edge and it'll open up the charms bar. On your desktop, you move your mouse to the top right corner. So once you do that, it brings up icons. Just move your mouse down and it'll enable you to use these icons. So you have five um, icons, search, share, start, devices, and settings. The start button basically acts in the same way that your um, Windows logo key on your keyboard does. If you look on the bottom left hand side of your screen you have the dates and time. Now when you are in any application at any amount of time all you have to do is you bring up the charms bar and if you click on search it'll bring up the apps and you can search for applications, settings, files as well as search other applications for something that you may be looking for. So if you're looking for a photo called um, me in Japan, you just type in me in Japan and it'll find a photo. So let's search for Camtasia. As you can see it's found two applications, no settings, but four files. 
Now let's say we want to download up, uh, Camtasia and we want to buy it. Now a nice way to do this is just to click on Bing when you search for something and it will search for Camtasia in Bing which is quite nice. Now when you have an application open and you want to close it, um, not really closing it by, by minimizing it but really closing it like pressing the X button on your uh, Windows 7 computer. Does. What you do is you move your mouse right to the top edge of your screen and you click and drag it all the way down to the bottom and that clears it out of the RAM. Another way to accomplish the same thing is to go to the bottom left edge of your screen or the top uh, left edge of the screen and just move your mouse down. Make sure it's pushed against the left edge border and you can choose between different applications that you had open at any amount of time throughout the day and all you have to do is right click and close. Now as you can see my friend sent me a message and it showed up on my computer which is quite handy. I don't have Facebook opened but I was able to get a Facebook message and my phone is somewhere else so I don't have to keep looking at my phone to get these Facebook messages. Okay so let's explore the charms bar a bit more. Um, you can open up the charms bar no matter what application you are in. Uh, we've already explored the search. The share means that you can share um, attachments, emails, photos, stuff like that with other people that you have set up on your computer. So if you have an email account set up, you can share a picture using that email without having to actually open up the email app, drag and drop a file. You can just start sharing stuff on specific applications. You can see I have nothing to share at the moment, so I can't show you how, how to share stuff. The start button basically does the same thing as pressing the Windows logo key on your keyboard. Devices shows you what's connected to your computer. Currently I only have a second screen connected, which you guys cannot see and we have settings. Now the settings will change for every single application that you are in. Basically the settings will do the same thing as your Android device when you click on the menu button and you can see currently on the Metro desktop we can only change the tiles and help. Now these six icons at the bottom will always remain here. No matter what application you are in it will always be there and you can see what's connected to your network, your sound, your screen brightness if you are on a tablet, keyboard if you have multiple languages set up, your power which is how you shut down sleep and restart your computer as well as your notifications which you can turn on or off you can see I'm gonna hide mine for three hours so it doesn't interrupt the video now you guys already saw that I already had notifications hidden and you guys saw a message that showed up that is technically not a notification what a notification is in Windows 8 is when a menu pops up on the top right hand side of your screen and it gives you information about the email the message or whatever notification you're using so let's open up the mail app and see what the setting looks like for the mail. As you can see we have accounts, options, help, about and a few other things. However these six icons at the bottom are still the same. And you might see this icon at the bottom called change PC settings. Well it's not really an icon, it's uh, sort of a uh, an option. Uh, most people do not know it's an option but if you click on it, it's going to open up your PC settings where you can customize lock screen, start screen and your account picture. So the lock screen is basically the same thing that you would see on an iOS device where it tells you to slide to unlock. So you can change the picture amongst these six or you can browse on your own on your computer and you can also choose what apps you want to show up on your lock screen. But what apps I mean is that it's basically notifications. You guys read that text. So the start screen is basically your metro desktop. You can change the color. So let's change our color to blue and let's change it to the geometrical shaped um, desktop. Now you do not have to click on save or apply. Windows 8 basically does all of this in the background. So that's the preview. We know what our desktop's going to look like. So let's change our account picture. You can see I already have one set up. This is completely useless. There's no real reason to have an account picture. Now you can use a camera to take a picture. Basically if you have a webcam attached to your computer you can take a screenshot of yourself or a picture of yourself and upload it. If you're using a tablet you can I think most of them come with a camera. My Acer Iconia has a camera on it, so you can switch between those. As you can see, we have our new desktop look and feel. Okay, so that's the sad thing about Windows 8, is that that's basically all you can customize. Now, obviously, if you click on this application called Desktop, it brings up your Windows 7 type desktop, except for one key feature that you're missing, which is the Start menu. Instead, it's been replaced by the Library folder. Now, if you're unhappy with this, and you really don't want to force yourself to learn Windows 8, what I suggest you do is download a program called Start is Back, and it'll allow you to use the Start menu. Basically, it works the same like how Windows 7 Start menu does. Now, there's not much you can do in the desktop besides do your usual Windows 7 stuff. Um, this is basically the Windows 7 operating system. 
Um, like I said before, this is sort of like your mobile operating system, this Metro Desktop, and this is like your default Windows 7 operating system. You have your normal options, screen resolution, personalized and stuff. And if you're wondering how to open up control panel, you can either search for it, or go to settings and there's your control panel personalization PC info, which is this, and you can do your usual things. Now to turn off your computer, restart or go to sleep, basically charms bar, go into settings and you got your power. You can turn off your computer no matter where you are. Um, as you can see we only have three options here. What happens if you want to log off or lock your computer for your sister or your mother or your dad to use? Well you can actually do that. You basically go back to your Metro desktop, click on your username and you have two options between lock and sign out as well as change account picture. Now this is something I forgot to show you guys. If you click on change account picture it basically brings up your PC settings again. Now I find this faster to do than the charms bar settings and then change PC settings. You can see that's a little bit faster. So you guys can choose between which uh, style you like. However, when you use change account picture, it opens up in your account picture settings, which is not a big deal. Okay, so one more nice feature about Windows 8 is that, as you know, everything opens up in full screen. So if we want to watch a movie and browse the internet at the same time, we actually cannot do it because how are we going to watch a movie in full screen and then still use our browser or whatever we're trying to do at the same time? But Windows 8 does give us a solution. We can either download a program called VLC, which is an advanced media player, or what we can do is we can use the built-in function. So I'm going to show you guys how to use the built-in function. So let's go to the desktop, and as you can see, I have my website open. I'll put the website in the description. Okay, so what we can do is, let's open up the left-hand side taskbar, and let's select our video. Now we can either drag it on the right-hand side of our screen, or the left-hand side of the screen. So just drag it and put it on the left-hand side of the screen. Let's find something to watch, and this is the Zero Doc that you trailer, which is about how they killed Osama bin Laden. There's also a book about it, it's, it's quite a good book. So let's play the trailer, and as you can see, it's going to play the trailer, and it's taken up most of the space for my screen. As you can see, my desktop is on the other side, and it's really small. So the way that we can um, make our desktop big again is either by clicking one of these apps that I have open, or by using the slider in the middle. So let's just click this, and drag it over to the left-hand side, and as you can see, the video's gotten smaller, well actually really small, um, it's not actually nice to watch it on that small of a screen. But you can see now if we enlarge our windows, it takes up all the space from right hand portion of our screen. Now keep in mind that you can do this with any type of application you have open. Let's say you want to browse your email, so let's go ahead and open up our email, just make sure that it's in our RAM, and then do the same same steps, just put it to our left hand side, and there you go, you can see the email one works really, really well. If you open up an email, you can see it shows a very small amount of the email. You can use your mouse wheel, but if you don't if you don't want to do that, if you want to see a bigger portion of the email screen, maybe you have an important email that you need to reply to, what you do is just drag the slider to the other side of the screen, and there you go, you can see you have most of the email app showing. I can see EVGA's new motherboard or whatever they're trying to sell me, and uh, yeah, that's pretty nice. An easier way to turn off your computer is by going into your desktop and clicking Alt F4. And you can see it gives you options between shut down, sleep, sign out, switches, and restart. That's all five options that your computer can do. But that's an easier way to close any type of application, game, or shut down your computer. So that's it for this video, guys. If you did like the tips and tricks and the features that I showed you about Windows 8, then please don't forget to leave us a comment, like, and subscribe. I'm planning to do more of these videos showing you guys how to do hacks and tips and tricks and stuff like that. So if you want to see more, just leave a comment, like the video of course. And also you guys can follow me on WordPress, Twitter, Tumblr and Facebook. You can send me a message on any one of those social networks. So yeah, thanks for watching guys.